So like I had to keep pressing stop and then play and then stop and then play because I'm like, oh my gosh, she's gonna do this in front of this lady. Like, oh, this is so cringeworthy. What's up everybody? Thanks for tuning in to this episode of English Turks where I review your favorite Turkish series with and without English subtitles. And today we're talking about Dotukun F. Karindir, episode six. Guys, I know I'm late. I apologize. Normally at the time where I usually film the videos, I was actually at a friend's wedding and I got to celebrate with them and it was really exciting. But part of that was not being able to film at my regular filming time, which means I didn't get a chance to edit. And then also because I was their MC at their wedding, I'm actually losing my voice a little bit if you can hear. Um, and so today's video won't be very long. But I did want to point out a few things from what we saw in this last episode. Now, I think that I'm seeing a pattern here with uh, TV8, I guess, because they're probably the ones that are cropping the video to make the fragments. So when we got episode four, we watched it and we realized we saw everything in the fragment. When we got the fragments for episode five, it was like, boom, when we saw the episodes, like, man, like, there were so many aspects of in that show that we did not see at all, that we didn't know it was coming. And now that we see episode six, I feel like the same thing happened with episode four. The fragments basically told us everything that was going to be in the episode, and they always put in the fragment what the end killer is going to be. So you think the whole episode, you're going to see the answer to what left you in a shocking state from the fragment, and yet you see nothing. So this whole episode, we went through this whole episode and she didn't actually say, Zenep, I need to tell you something while sitting on the hospital bed until the very last thing in the episode. I can't stand those things, but I understand why they do it. It's almost like clickbait. And so in the episode, we just start off with Zenep and Mehdi, they're back together, they've made their decision. I understand the family's hesitation. Um, it's not the parents, it's mostly the sister. And even though I'm not a fan of the sister, I completely understand the hesitation because it was like so much back and forth. But she has a bit of a nasty mouth on her. And I will say, I really do not like how she is egging on Banal when obviously there's like nothing to be egging on. Um, she's obviously doing whatever she feels is right, which is completely wrong because she's doing a disservice to Banal, a disservice to her brother, and a disservice to Zenit, which I know she could care less about. Now, this whole episode is basically cha transitioning from everything being about Zenit to not everything being about Mehdi. They've come to a middle ground as they were in the beginning with a little bit more understanding of each other. But now we have this thing that in Mehdi's eyes, it really shouldn't be a secret. Like we were done with, we were over with, but I think where they went wrong or where he went wrong in particular, and what I'm referring to is when he spoke with Banal and he's saying like, the more back and forth we're doing, it's gonna make it seem like I'm hiding something from her when we have really nothing going on between us and that thing has ended already. Um, the real, area where he went wrong prior to saying the statement was not just being truthful with Zenep in the first place because the same thing was with Zenep. She didn't pursue anything with Mehdi prior to break, like completely cutting things off with Farouk, you know? Like they were separated, they were angry with each other and then she was like, okay, I'm not, you know, like we're done. Like there's nothing there. You left me, you walked away from me. And it was clear to Farouk that they weren't together because it was his friend telling him, you should go back and get her, don't drop her for this lie. And for Zenep, it was clear to her that it was over because she expected him to walk away and she wasn't expecting him to come back. So in that sense, you know, Zenep was completely done with that relationship. It was freshly done, but it was done. And for Mehdi, it's the same thing. It's different people, same situation. And so Mehdi's like trying to get it across to, you know, to them that like there's no there's nothing going on between us. So let's not make it a thing. But he should have just been truthful when, you know, she met Banal and, you know, Zenep 
obviously had a conversation, which he knows that they had conversations together and all that stuff. Like, why don't you just say, hey, like, me and her used to have a thing, but we don't have anything anymore. At least be truthful for her. But it's because he didn't say anything about it at all. That's what's going to make it look bad, especially when Zainab is making comments, asking questions, and he's deliberately lying. So Benal is trying to make a decision. She's trying to go and tell him what happened but at this point she doesn't know that they've decided to get back together when she approaches the house because he wasn't responding to her phone calls then the uh Nettie's mom is like okay well I don't know what you're doing here but let me make sure you know that they're back together because maybe you heard they were breaking up but I want to make sure you know they're back together before you say anything and you know Benal took the hint left the sister egged her on and told her don't worry you still have a chance with him it's really stupid but now in this episode we really got to see what went down between Benal and Mehdi I don't think we know the entire gist of the story because we don't really know what led to them sleeping together but we do know that Mehdi did kind of cut it off with her so it was basically a friends with benefits situation that they had going on and then Benal got a little bit too clingy wanted more and he just completely cut it off from right then and there he didn't give her a reason why he didn't want to marry her but she wanted marriage and he didn't want to marry her and he didn't want to you know they kind of painted it like he didn't want to break her heart or whatever but in this instance, it it just, it kind of goes with that saying, like, you really shouldn't be constantly tying yourself to people, especially in a situation like friends with benefits, unless you are for sure you want this person just as a friends with benefits. And I'm a firm believer in there's no such thing as friends with benefits because you're always tied to a person that you're doing those kind of things with. You're always going to have some kind of extra feelings that you didn't anticipate for. It really isn't, it shouldn't be a thing, but people make it a thing. Many people will disagree with me, but I don't think friends with benefits is something safe for anyone to do just because you're going to tie yourself into so many different feelings. You can, there's so many things that can happen to you. So that's the situation they found themselves in. That's the situation, of course, a divorcee, but now it's going to end up, you know, getting tied to. And then, um, you know, Maddie's like, listen, you know what? We need to end this now because I see you're getting feelings for me. And that's why they ended things. Now, you can't be friends with someone after you've been friends with benefits with them and then you cut it off unless it's a mutual, like, hey, we were just friends with benefits. I don't understand that. I don't think that makes any sense to me. And so Banal and, you know, Mehdi break up in that sense of we're not going to do this anymore. But I guess prior to that, they may have slept together. And so some people are speculating that it's not really him. But it, guys, it's him. It's obviously him. She's not going to think that he's the father if he wasn't actually the father. She's not going to make a fool of herself, go over to his house and say, hey, I'm pregnant if she wasn't actually pregnant with you know, you know, you know what I mean, you know. So anyway, um, Zenep is getting more and more attached to her, I would say. And in the process of becoming more attached to her, you know, this is going to be like a bigger like shock factor when the secret actually does come out. They're making it seem like they're going to tell us in the next episode. I think they will because I'm seeing a pattern here and hopefully they do. Now let's move on to Zenep's dad. Now, in the last review that I said, I was like, root, root for Zenep's dad. He's starting to, you know, defend his daughter, all this. And what people don't understand that alcoholism is a serious illness. A lot of people go through it, but it's not very understood, just like mental illness is not very understood. So you can actually look at Zenep's dad and think like, ah, oh, he was horrible for what he did. But when you suffer from alcoholism, anything can trigger that. So... He's going out trying to find a job and everyone is denying him and telling him, no, they don't want to give him a job. And it's because of what people know of him. You're a drunk. And so he couldn't escape that. And he was trying to do better, but he was, but he's not yet completely healed. He's not like he's gone to therapy or anything. So he doesn't know how to deal with rejection and people who suffer from a type of addiction will usually withdraw back to that addiction because it provides that escape. And so when he went, decided to drink and then went to the house, like literally I was cringing the entire time. Now I watched it without subs the first time. And so like I had to keep 
pressing stop and then play and then stop and then play because I'm like, oh my gosh, he's going to do this in front of this lady. Like, oh, this is so cringeworthy. But I, when I watched it again with the English subtitles, I realized that Medi's niece could have prevented it. And she decided because she was angry at the fact that, you know, Kibrit was going to get her room, that she was been begging Medi for all this time. And because she said, oh, have you been drinking? Because he can honestly have walked through that house. He might not have said too much. They might have been able to spoon away. She might have been able to push him out the door. But she knew that that would have been a huge stepping stone for them. And you could see it on her face when she initially did it. And then when she realized what it caused, you could see the guilt on her face. And I'm actually angry with her for doing that. But I also understand because she's on the brink of going to college. She doesn't want to stay in the same room with her mom. It makes sense. So I understand why she was pissed off, but she didn't realize being young, you know, like the impact it could play on people's lives because now it completely pushed Zeynep's dad out the door, a man who is on the, you know, just failing at life right now. And then this girl who needs people to take care of her, like all of this is playing a role and she played a part in making that a negative situation. I really did feel bad for Zeynep's dad because I'm sure that's not something he wanted, but it's so hard. I mean, you have to understand and recognize that you're an alcoholic and he knows that, but getting the proper help can probably help you uh, not fall into you know, drinking again once you get a negative result out of something. And so right now it looks like at the end of the episode that he might get hit by a train or get run over by a train. I'm hoping that that's not the case because I feel like Zena has to have some kind of closure with her dad and it would be really difficult. I still can't stand her mother. So like she got like a difficult pair to deal with. I honestly feel like they were forced to get married and now she's just stuck with him. You know, I think that's what Eminem was trying to tell Zenep at the end. Like, you know, hey, you know, where did I hear that before? Oh, yeah, I know. I heard that from your mother. I feel like it's true. She's on, like, honestly, it's true. So this episode was really good, guys. I'm sorry, like, I couldn't, like, expand more on it. I can't wait to see episode seven. Pray for my voice so that it gets better. And I'll see you guys in my next review. Bye.